Hi there, my name is Neil McKenzie, ex Grand Prix rider and three times a British Superbike champion. Today I'd like to talk to you about track day riding. So since I retired, I've been instructing on track days all over the UK and Europe and instructed lots of different riders pretty much at every level. If you haven't done a track day before and are considering one, then do not be intimidated, do not be scared. It's the best experience in the world. If you've got a motorcycle license, that means you can ride a motorbike. If you can ride a motorbike, then you'll easily enjoy a track day experience. So if it's your first time, just uh, sign up, sign yourself into the novice group and uh, get ready for the track day. Very important part is, is preparation and that doesn't have to involve a lot. Basically give your bike a good clean, clean for me up close and personal with your bike means that you're checking everything as you go. Really important to have some basic checks before you embark on your first track day or, or any track day. Have plenty of fuel. Check the oil. Give your bike a good clean because cleaning for me you get up close and personal. You can check things like fork seals. You might have a, a leaking fork that you wouldn't see unless you get up close. Check your brake pads. Do a whole nut and bolt check with everything and then Tire pressures, very important. Get the correct tire pressures for a track day. And chain, check your chain. 10 things that are worth checking. If you don't do that, you could break down in your first session and then you've wasted the day, your time and a track day fee. So really important for a, a little bit of basic uh, prep. And that starts with just up close and personal cleaning. When you arrive at track day, it'd be nice and early in the morning, get there uh, on time and you find that all the track day riders are pretty much uh, friendly, they're helpful. If you are new to track days, then there'll be someone there to give you a bit of a hand. On your first session, for me, the best thing to do is just circulate. Don't worry about anything else. If you haven't been to the track before or you're learning a new track, just circulate round and round. Enjoy riding your bike at your pace. Don't, don't take any notice of anyone else. Everyone's at a different level and experience and they'll be doing their own thing and they'll be looking after themselves and they'll be looking after you. Track days are very well policed with instructors and officials, so if anyone's misbehaving, then you'll be okay. But there's no need to be nervous. Just enjoy riding your bike. Get a feel for the track over the first few sessions, just where the next corner goes so that you can sit down in the chair when you get back after your session and mentally do a lap in your head. Until you can do that, you don't really want to be pushing any harder. But as I said, just enjoy riding your bike. Some tracks are longer, some tracks are trickier than others, and so every, every track is a little bit different. As many of you know on this channel, I have to travel the world a lot with my role as a team manager of the Vision Track Racing Team in the Moto3 paddock. And two problems that I hadn't realised that I'd have is internet security and Netflix. But handily, Private Internet Access VPN has worked perfectly for me, and they've also agreed to sponsor this video. Whenever you're browsing online on an unprotected device like a phone or a laptop, your phone or tablet is sending out unprotected information to the World Wide Web. It can get in the hands of the wrong people at the wrong time and that's something you don't need. When I'm travelling, I use the Wi-Fi in random cafes when I'm on the other side of the world, which has made me nervous about internet security, so I needed to find a VPN to use. Virtual Private Network or VPN, for short, hides your IP address. Perfect and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. This way it shields your private life from the people you don't want it to see. PIA don't store or record any of your personal data and they have a no log policy, which also allows you to protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time. Not only is PIA great for online security, but it's also for entertainment. Netflix in Thailand and Germany is not the same as the UK version for me, and my Spanish mechanics that wanted me to watch Torrente was only available in Spain. But thanks to PIA, I can now watch this. I just connected to the Spanish server on PIA and I was immediately able to watch the show on Netflix. By using my link in the description, you can get an 86% discount on private internet access for two years and four extra months for free. That's just £1.57 a month. That's a great deal. Big thanks to PIA for sponsoring this video. Once you're up to speed and you know where you're going on the track, then think about a gear pattern. We've all got six gears in our bikes, but quite often you get away using second to fourth gear. Three gears uh, is more than normal for a lot of riders on any racetrack. 
Um, most bikes are very flexible. If you're on a 600 or 1000 cc, these bikes have got, have got plenty of power. You don't need to be into first gear at slow corners and into sixth gear on the straights. And what that does, it just allows you time for other things that there's so much going on when you're riding around a the track, then changing up and down the gears in between every corner is, is something that's unnecessary and it just frees up time to do other things like concentrating on where you're going and braking and setting yourself up for corners. So first thing, get to know the track. Second thing, get a gear pattern going so that you're doing the same thing at every corner on every lap. Once you've got that working, then you can start to think about lines. Uh, you can follow some other riders. You can ask for help with instructors that might be available on the track day, but it's about just normally using most of the track, nice wide corner entries, apex, and then using all the track on the way out of corners. There's a different story at every corner, at every track in the UK. So again, it's just about experience and lots of circulating and, and getting to know where you're going. Next thing I'd like to talk about is body position. Now on the road, jumping around your bike, moving around your bike, it's not really practical, looks a bit daft, um, it's not nearly really necessary. However, come to riding on a racetrack and a little bit of body position can make a big difference. Basically your bike always wants to go in a straight line. So if you can introduce a little bit of body position, then that will just help the bike and your overall track day experience. And I'm not talking about elbow down, knee down even, Marc Marquez, Grand Prix style riding. I'm just talking about a little bit of input to help your bike turn. And the first thing is something very simple and that's just bending that inside elbow. And you see when I do that, top part of my body comes forward, it comes to the inside, puts a little bit of pressure on the inside bar, which generates a little bit of counter steer and that will help the bike turn into the corner. So a typical approach to a fast corner, you might be coming along a fast straight. So before you brake, it's always wise just to push back, get your weight over the back of the bike, because once you start braking, if you're all the way forward, you're not gonna be able to push back. So you have to be ahead of the game when it comes to braking. So hard braking into corner, this is when you wanna think about your body position. So at that same point of braking, pushing back, bracing yourself, just bending your inside elbow will allow your body to come forward and to the inside. Try and line your, your head up where the mirror is or where the mirror should be. And at the same time, a little bit of pressure on the pegs just to move your bum to the inside. And it just gets all the weight to the inside. It also puts a little bit of pressure on the inside bar, which uh, helps counter steer and that will help the bike turn into the corner. If you sat in the middle of the bike and you do none of that, the bike will just, it will always want to go in a straight line so a little bit of body position and also as you're heading into corner just let yourself relax sure you have to hold on but just relax let yourself mold into the bike the bike will do its thing if you're tense on the bike the suspension's tense everything's rigid if you relax let the tires and the suspension do their thing and that will help the bike corner one thing that is important about body position is when to do it so if you're approaching a corner it's time to brake you're gonna try and introduce that little bit of body position at the same time. If you watch any top level racing, you'll see the first thing the racers, the riders do is get, get their body position sorted. It gets it out of the way. You can then think about approaching the corner, your line, changing gear, braking, and most importantly, you're not unsettling the bike just as you're turning into the corner. You've got it all done, you've got it out of the way. If you haven't done anything like that before, then it will feel a little bit weird, a little bit strange, a little bit alien, but the more you do it and the more you practice it, the easier it will become and it will become second nature. As I'm braking, most bikes now have more power than you need on the brake. So for me, two fingers is plenty uh, on the brake. You see some riders use a handful. Valentino Rossi through all his career was used four fingers pretty much, but I find any bike I'm on, two, two fingers is enough pressure on the brake lever to get yourself pulled up and stop. Now if you're on a fast straight and it's time to brake, just to get things into slow motion, it's all about being smooth. So the first thing you're going to do is roll back on the throttle. At the same time, a little bit of pressure on the brake just to engage the pads with the disc. 
and then you can start applying a bit of pressure once you've got the suspension and the front tyre loaded. If you're going to grab the brakes straight away with a lot of pressure, it'll lock the front wheel. So common sense says just to make it all slow all down a bit, get some pressure on the tyre, onto suspension and then keep things nice and safe. So all of that's going to help the bike turn into the corner. Important as well to have your feet in the right position. Having your feet all the way forward, your boot's going to stick out, uh, your toes will touch down, um, just not as comfortable and you could wreck your boots. When you've got your feet back on the balls of your feet, you've got another pair of shock absorbers, you've got more control of the bike, you can weight the foot pegs and move around on the bike, but when you're all the way forward like that, just a lot less leverage, it looks untidy, you could wreck your boots and you've got a lot less ground clearance. Important thing is to be one step ahead of the track with body position. So if you're approaching a right-hander, just get in position, turn into the corner. The other thing, after you're through the corner and you're coming out the other side of the corner, wait until you're upright before you get back onto the bike. It's the same as entering the corner. If you unsettle the bike at the wrong time, it just upsets everything. So wait till you're out of the corner, upright, and then back into the middle of the bike. And just going back to that, that bending that inside elbow, if you do nothing else, start with that and that will help your body position and help the bike turn. So as you're building up your track knowledge, you may be introducing a little bit of body position, you've got your gear position, your gear pattern working and you're circulating and becoming much more familiar with the track. That might take to lunchtime. Normal track days you'll get three or four sessions in in the morning and then you get the lunch break. You get time to think about things, absorb things and then you'll find that when you go back out in the afternoon everything becomes a little bit more clear. Just on the lunchtime thing, a full roast dinner and lots of drinks and puddings and stuff is not a good idea so eat light, have a, have a breakfast before you come. Keep yourself hydrated throughout the day and a really light lunch is good because um, as we say what happens is you get into food coma and you maybe want to have a nap before you get back out so just the minimal amount of lunch will, will serve you well you can get fed later on when the track day is done so you're getting up to speed uh, you've got all these things lining up um, important as you're riding around the track as i said before using all the tracks so that's uh, a nice entry point uh, apex and then once you're at the apex and coming through the apex of the corner then it's at that point you want to look for your exit point and as soon as you see your exit point that's a, it's the time to not whack the throttle open again keeping things smooth catch the throttle and then gradually increase your speed and throttle opening as you head out the corner and you're getting the bike more upright onto the fatter part of the tyre. So once you get up to speed at a new racetrack or if it's your first time on a track day you might have spent the morning just circulating just absorbing everything there's so much to take in so it's important not to rush anything it's much more enjoyable and safer if you take things in but say you get to the afternoon and then you're ready to build up a little bit of speed again tiny steps each session lap by lap is the key and it starts with braking maybe just braking a little bit later um, and I'm talking six inches or a foot. If you've got a braking marker, then, then any of the faster straights or corner approaches, just try braking a little bit later. And what happens then is you'll obviously brake a bit later. You'll get to the apex faster as you head into the corner. But these are, again, small steps. Once you get to the apex, the time between letting off the brakes and getting back to the throttle also shortens. So that speeds that part up. And then you're rolling on the throttle, you're looking for your exit point, and then you're rolling out the corner as you're picking the bike up and getting to the corner exit quicker. And it's just a case of speeding up what you've been doing. And if you've got a good pattern going, if you're circulating nice and smooth and you know where you're going in the racetrack, then, then small steps, speeding up the process is, is how to improve your lap time. I'm not looking at maximum attack. Step by step, just building up speed. One thing I always say, if I put a stopwatch on any track ray rider on their first session of the day, and then put a stopwatch on them again on the session before lunchtime, without them trying any harder, doing anything different, the lap time would be so much quicker. And that's purely because they're familiarizing themselves with the racetrack, with the bike, they're getting a feel for things. So the speed will come, the lap times will come down without having to attack the racetrack. Just let it come nice and steadily, step by step. Now, by mid-afternoon, 
you will have done possibly about two Grand Prix distances. So just bear in mind that you're at your most tired and you're also going as fast as you've gone all day. Um, and without tempting fate, this is maybe the time just to have a, a warm down couple of sessions towards the end of the day. It's not the time to be chasing a faster lap time or getting that lap just perfect. If you've had a good day and you've improved and you're feeling satisfied at that point, then it's nice just to maybe ride out the last couple of sessions. I always recommend to any of my pupils, uh, it's at this point of the day that, as we know, riding bikes, something goes wrong before you know what's happened. And quite often it's just because you're tired and you're not quite as sharp as you, was, as you were first thing in the morning or, or just after lunchtime. So just remember, uh, keep things safe. Let things wind down towards the end of the day. Quit while you're ahead if that's where you you feel would be a, a good place in the day to, to quit, as I said, but just keep things safe. And hopefully you have an enjoyable, happy track day and you go home with your bike and your body in one piece. That's the most important part of the day. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.